second May bank holiday means we have another short week coming up and, without wishing to be in any way disrespectful to companies like Auto Trader, Intermediate Capital, Pets at Home Renewing and Body Cut, scheduled corporate news is relatively thin on the ground. However, Intermediate Capital's full year results for the 12 months at the end of March should bear scrutiny for one reason in particular, and that will be the asset manager's dividend. Intermediate Capital, which entered the FTSE 100 index for the first time in May in 2020 and then returned to the fold in December 2023, invests some $86 billion worth of client capital by providing finance to small and medium-sized enterprises, or SMEs, in fixed income instruments, or bonds, and in real estate and infrastructure. It's done so to great effect, as can be seen from assets under management, capital raised from investors, asset realizations for its clients, and ultimately, that dividend paid to shareholders. Intermediate Capital has raised its annual distribution for 13 years in a row, and analysts expected to add to this record when it reports full year results and declares its that final dividend on Tuesday the 28th of May. The total payments expected to be 80.8 pence a share, compared to 77.5p in the year to March 2023. This is one, though just one possible explanation, for why the shares are trading at pretty much an all-time high and it's just a matter of maths. Ten years ago, in May 2014, Intermediate Capital's share price was 434 pence and the dividend for the year turned out to be 21p a share for a historic yield of 4.8%. That's very respectable in itself, but the forecast 80.8p a share for the year just ended implies a yield of 20.6% on the share price of a decade ago. That is the power of the maths, but growing a dividend every year for a decade is nowhere as easy as it sounds. Competition, regulation, and technological change or obsolescence all challenge companies' business models every single day, and only the strong can weather such an assault, and that's before we get to unexpected events like pandemics. Just 18 members of the FTSE 100 can point to a 10-year dividend record growth. The longest streaks 53 years at FNC Investment Trust, while Segro, the real estate investment trust, has just joined this elite group with its 10th consecutive increase for its annual payment. But those who have achieved this feat or have even nurtured growth streaks that are longer still have provided, in aggregate between them, share price performance and total returns that, that are well above those provided by the wider FTSE 100, even if that benchmark index is finally setting a streak of new all-time highs. The average capital gain for the 18 10 year dividend growers over the past decade is 226%, compared to just 23% from the FTSE 100. The average total return is 319%, with dividends reinvested, and that compares to 80% from the FTSE 100. However, like any investment strategy, this one is not infallible, it may not work all the time, and it's one that's best suited to those investors with a long term, patient investment horizon. Some firms have fallen out of this list after unexpected dividend cuts. In addition, the charms of these 18 names are fairly well understood now, and they often fall into the quality bucket of many portfolios, where investors seek out strong franchises that are capable of providing steadily compounding returns over time. But even quality does not guarantee safety if the valuation paid to access the cash flow of the dividend streams is too high. Some of these 18 stocks' share prices suffered a bit of a reckoning in 2022 and 2023, especially as money had begun to trade on valuations which, are, which represented a huge premium to the FTSE 100, at least on an earnings basis, and they probably represented a discount on a yield basis. High interest rates didn't help much either, as the higher discount rates implied by the increased cost of money meant that the net present value of future cash flows went down in discounted cash flow models or DCFs, and took the theoretical value of the equity with it. Higher confidence in the economic outlook could also tempt investors to look for cheaper cyclical earnings growth, rather than expensive, reliable, secular profit increases. So careful research is therefore needed because no single investment strategy can work all the time. It's also worth bearing in mind that only 9 of the 18 names were actually members of the FTSE 100 a decade ago. Intermediate Capital, along with DCC, Diploma, Foral and Colonial Investment Trust, Halma, Hickma, Scottish Mortgage, Segro, and Spirac Sarko were not constituents of the UK's Premier Index 10 years ago, 
So investors may need to dig around in the realms of the mid and small caps if they're to find at least some of the next generation of serial dividend growers. I hope you're all well and in good spirits. Thank you for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again next time.